Namaste and welcome to the second episode of the Influence Academy with myself, Anusha Shrestha. In previous episode, we discussed various healthcare practices here in Australia and some general knowledge regarding COVID-19. In today's episode, I'm honored to welcome one of the most passionate career development coach who is helping people to get their first professional job in Australia since 13 years. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ryan Sressler. Namaste to everyone. Sir, welcome and to our show. Thank you very much for this opportunity and thanks for such an inspiring uh, introduction. Thank you. <laughs> so how are you, sir? Uh, very good, thank you. So how are you dealing with this current pandemic situation? As you know, there is a saying, uh, when the fishermen can't go to the sea, they mend their nets. And that's what I've been doing. The business is a bit slow at the moment. Okay. So uh, I've been trying to work on some new business ideas, mm -hmm. new products. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I've been very busy. Uh, like, you know, even during the pandemic, I was working like almost a whole day and half a night working from home. <laughs> so let's talk about your company. You started Budding Talents Recruitment 13 years ago when you came here in Australia. So could you please share your experience to our viewers regarding your journey? Sure. Um, um, like, you know, this business of my uh, Budding Talents Recruitment, it's also known as studying work. Actually, I started it out of my own experience, uh, like my uh, experience, the difficulties that I faced uh, looking for a job when I, uh, you know, uh, was looking for a job after my graduation and having some experience. I actually uh, was lucky enough to uh, get a job while I was studying, okay. you know, because I had some really good results during my bachelor's. Mm -hmm. So I found an employer, they said, okay, uh, you know, you come and work with us, you also do your MBA, uh, we'll pay half of your tuition fees, and uh, you'll be working with us on a part-time basis. And I was so lucky to get that job, right? But I actually, you know, I got that job uh, not that easily. Um, I had to uh, knock their door so many times. You know, I, I made an appointment and went to see the owner of the business. Uh, at least two times uh, and then uh, that's how he saw my enthusiasm and uh, you know gave me that opportunity and then I worked for that company for a couple of years you know uh, and then they uh, sent me to India uh, for a project okay. uh, I went there uh, but I realized that the product wasn't suitable for the Indian market mm -hmm. and I decided to come back and at that time I also had recently got married and my wife also, you know, didn't want to stay in India, you know, uh, she wanted to come to Australia as well. And then I came to Australia and then uh, luckily I got another job and I worked there for about a year. And again, they wanted to send me to New Zealand. And then I didn't want to go to New Zealand again, you know. And then I went to the employment market and I started looking for jobs. In spite of having an Australian qualification, having, you know, at least three years of experience under my belt, I was having difficulty finding a job. And uh, I had so many friends then, you know, a lot of them really good students. Uh, they already had degrees in IT, in a business, but none of them were working in their own field of study, right? And I, I went to a couple of interviews with uh, recruitment agencies, mm -hmm. but I didn't get the job offer, you know, uh, I didn't get selected for the second round. And I thought, you like, you know, this is a very easy job. Why don't I just start a recruitment agency myself? And I can help myself by self-employed. At the same time, I can help people like me, uh, you know, who have difficulty finding a job. And that's how the study and work about uh, Dallas recruitment was born. And the rest is history. So <laughs> what are the services that your company provides that help uh, our viewers to get insights on all these job market uh, areas? Yeah, sure. Uh, we actually uh, work in uh, a number of verticals, like, you know, we do placements in accounting, IT, engineering, and other business occupations like marketing, HR, supply chain management, right? Uh, so basically, uh, the difference between us and other agencies is that, you know, uh, most of the recruitment agencies, they work for employers. So they are given job brief, like employers tell them, this is what we need. This is the kind of candidates we're looking for. 
um, and then uh, they go and look for such candidates. And they have to abide by that brief because you know they charge very high fees to the employers, like you know they charge up to like twenty percent of their annual salary package, right? So when they're charging such high fees, you know uh, they don't want to take a risk by sending someone who has no local experience or someone who's a recent graduate, right? But uh, what we do is, you know, uh, we don't charge very high fees. And at the same time, we try and educate the customer, you know. We, we, we try and tell the employer that, uh, you know, you shouldn't just be looking for people with experience. You know, you should be looking to hire people who are hungry, you know. Um, as I say to them, like we have candidates with PhD, not the uh, doctor PhD, PhD, but the people who are poor in terms of knowledge and willing to learn and are hungry to succeed, you know, and, and they are driven, driven. to uh, put in the hard work and achieve their goals. So you right? talked about uh, customer service. Yeah. Are your customers international students or just uh, residents? Okay. Are your customers? So basically, uh, you know, uh, in recruitment there are two terms, clients and customers, okay. candidates. We don't call them customers, okay. right? Clients are the ones who are employers. Employers. And the candidates are the ones who are actually job seekers. So in our case, you know, uh, we actually look after those people who have been ignored by other recruitment consultants. You know, uh, we look after graduates uh, with no experience. Uh, we look after students who has to do work experience as part of their course. Uh, we look after uh, skilled migrants, you know, who have trouble finding job in Australia because of lack of local experience. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, we work with people who are uh, already, uh, you know, Australian citizens or uh, permanent residents or temporary residents. Uh, but still, you know, uh, having difficulty, uh, not able to find a job because of ex lack of experience. Uh, so you can say we are, uh, you know, the experienced people. Experienced people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what is the current situation of this job market? So to be honest, you know, at the moment, uh, because of the COVID-19 crisis, the job market is pretty uh, bad, you know, except for some areas, uh, most, employers have frozen their recruitment, recruitment yeah. right? Uh, there are still jobs in certain areas, like as you might guess, you know, healthcare, because they need lots of nurses, doctors, right? Uh, and th there is also s demand for staff in uh, retail, retail, like supermarkets. Uh, like all the frontline jobs are in demand, you know. Uh, but at the same time, there's also demand for some IT professionals, uh, like as you might see, a lot of these shops, like like you know, brick and mortar shops, are actually closed. They all trying to move online. Mm -hmm. So to move online their business, mm -hmm. they need people need with IT skills. IT skills. Yeah, like web developers. They need digital marketing specialist. You know, uh, they uh, they also need people who has good uh, graphic design skills, right? So there are some jobs in those areas. And also I would like to mention that there is also a lot of opportunities in engineering, mm -hmm. in uh, civil engineering mainly, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, you know, the government is spending a lot of money to boost the economy. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, they're investing in infrastructure. So, so there, uh, there will be a lot of jobs in civil engineering as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but apart from those areas, uh, other areas like, you know, Recruitment is bad, uh, you know, um, also uh, jobs in uh, business, you know, even manufacturing, uh, you know, uh, those areas are a little bit slow at the moment. Is this problem is because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the first of one of its kind, first of its kind, or yeah. what did this happen before? I think COVID-19 is uh, the biggest contributor okay. uh, in the economic slowdown. You know, as you can see, uh, there's so many restrictions for social distancing, you know. Uh, so a lot of businesses can't open. Uh, they can't even have people coming to office to work. But at the same time, uh, I think the, the global macroeconomic factors might have also contributed because uh, the global economy was already slowing down uh, before the pandemic, you know. And also in the case of Australia, um, I think the relationship between um, 
you know, China and Australia is also not going very well. Um, was a little bit, uh, I can say, over smart in, uh, you know, uh, blaming China for the uh, coronavirus. Yeah, and there's so, a so budding racism going on as well. Yeah, so, so China Chinese is trying to, uh, you know, penalize Australia by canceling the, uh, you know, imports. Imports. You know, um, and they, they say that they're not sending international students that much like uh, they w used to. So these things will also have a lot of impact in the Australian economy because uh, Australia has four uh, largest exports uh, like, you know, uh, iron ore, coal, international students, tourism, and even agriculture. You know, uh, we have basically only one customer, which is China. Mm -hmm. And if China doesn't buy them, you know, uh, our economy will suffer. Regarding the market, sir, what are the problems faced by fresh graduates and skilled migrants? You know, there is, there is this uh, paradox, you know, uh, you need a job to get experience and you need experience to, to get, get a, a job. job. You know, that's the biggest problem faced by uh, graduates and skilled migrants. Uh, you know, I come across so many skilled migrants uh, who, in spite of having so many years experience in their home country, when they come here, they go for interviews and then they ask for local experience. As I said earlier, the recruitment consultants are the ones who look after most of the job vacancies in Australia, mm -hmm. about 90%, mm -hmm. and they act as a gatekeeper, you know. Okay. So because they're charging such high fees to the employers, they don't want to risk their business by sending someone with no local experience. Mm -hmm. But how are you going to get local experience if you don't get a job no. here, right? Um, so that's why uh, they face this, uh, you know, dilemma, you know, um, uh, but, but there are ways uh, on how to tackle this problem, yeah, which I can explain in detail. So usually uh, what happens uh, when a skilled migrant or a graduate look for a job is uh, like, you know, they face this uh, obstacle uh, of not having the local experience. Local experience. Um, so to, to gain the local experience, uh, they can do internships. Internship. You know, um, like usually internships are done as part of the course while studying. But uh, internship can also be done to gain that local experience. You know, so what does internship uh, do is um, it actually helps the person to get their foot in the door of the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they get chance to practice what they've learned, and also they get chance to prove their worth to their pot to their potential employer. You know, so the employer actually gets to try them out before hiring. Uh, so you can say it's like a backdoor entry into the company, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you apply for jobs, you get all the rejections. You know, inst instead you can go into the company as an intern. Intern. You know, build your relationship with your supervisor. You know, impress them with your outstanding job. You know, and then get the job offer. You know, even if you don't get the job offer, you know, uh, you will come out of the internship with a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. right? And also, you know, you will get um, a glowing reference. In Australia, reference is very important, you know. I think not just Australia, anywhere around the world, as they say, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know. Right? So, so when you have a reference, so what happens is it actually validates your experience from overseas, right? Like, for example, if I was a civil engineer and I worked in Nepal for about 10 years as a civil engineer, uh, I can't prove to the... Uh, potential employer in Australia that those 10 years were really good experience, you know, because that interviewer, uh, he might have this wrong perception about Nepal, you know, he, uh, when I tell him like, uh, or her, that I come from Nepal, uh, that that person might straight away think about like, you know, Yak and Mount Everest, uh, they, they, they might think, okay, I don't think Nepal has any civil engineering project, uh, all the people over there, like they heard Yak, you know, but that's not the case, right, because uh, Nepal has developed so much and Nepal has a very good manpower you know uh, our Nepalese people who come here with the qualification they have already worked there some of them actually studied in uh, the best universities in India or they might have studied in Russia or whatever and come back to Nepal right so uh, by going for an internship by gaining that experience and getting that reference letter uh, it actually validates that experience as well mm -hmm. And it always sounds better when someone else says good things about you than you blowing your own trumpet, you know? Yeah, yeah. So when you go to interview, you tell them, oh, I'm good at this, I'm good at that, and you oversell yourself, 
then the interviewer might think, oh, this guy talks too much, and, and there might be this, uh, uh, you know, personality uh, class, right? Uh, but if they can give them a reference, and when the interviewer calls that referee, uh, asks about this person, and if that person says, oh, yeah, I actually had this person for interview or for internship for three months, and he did a wonderful job, you know, I really wanted to hire him, but uh, unfortunately we didn't have a budget, so we couldn't hire him, you know, but I highly recommend that you don't uh, miss this person, you know, hire him now, you know, and then that person will definitely hire that person, right, because it really sounds better when someone else says good things about you. Like even to get more knowledge yeah. regarding the particular company that you're applying for. Yeah. Not just applying, just this to even to know more about getting more experience. Yeah. Since you are the beginners, since you are the fresh graduates. Yes, exactly. Uh, like you know, uh, these people uh, who are fresh graduates and skilled migrants, uh, they have this really tremendous desire to learn. You know. And they're all in the new country, you know. Uh, they have so many dreams, you know. They want to buy a nice car. They want to buy a house. You know, uh, they they want to send their kids to good schools. And uh, they don't get any government support. So they are in the do or die situation. And when you are in that do or die situation, you, you actually really do well. Uh, whereas if you're getting government support, you become a bit lazy, you know. For these fresh graduates or, uh, and the skilled migrants, the money is not the motivating factor. Their experiences are. Yeah, you mean like, you know, uh, a lot of these candidates, for them, you know, getting a job is more important. Uh, like, uh, growing their career is more important. Growing the career. For them, money is not the motivating factor at these days. So that's why uh, we usually capitalize on this, uh, their weakness or their strengths. It can be both weakness and strength. Um, so we, we, we go to employers and we tell them, we have these great candidates who are willing to come there and work for you at a reasonable salary first to prove their to worth. Prove their worth, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so your initial investment will be very low. Maybe like for right. example, you know, a civil engineer like you know, with five years experience in Nepal, they can come here and they can uh, go for, uh, let's say, uh, a junior side engineer role at sixty thousand dollars a year, you know, whereas the market rate is like eighty thousand dollars, so the company straight away saved twenty thousand dollars. But uh, once they have the experience, experience. Uh, then then you have to pay them the market rate. Otherwise, you can't get their loyalty, right? Because they're not stupid, you know. They will be looking for a job elsewhere, <laughs> right? And once you've turned them up, you know, you don't want to lose them. You want to keep them forever. So, so initially you will save some money by offering them a reasonable salary, but once they are experienced, they're proven, proven their worth, then you have to pay them the market rate. And again, you know, it becomes win-win for both parties. I just want to ask you some interesting, one interesting question. Yeah. Um, we see people come here to Australia, finish their university degrees, eventually get permanent residence, yeah. and settle down. But they settle down for some jobs which they are not happy with. Mm. For instance, uh, let's say, we, let's talk about moms. Mm. Uh, what we see is they work in nursing homes, mm. aged care facilities, yep. but they are not happy with it. But mm. they they can get more out of their careers. They yes. can get more out of opportunity out of their careers. Yep. So how do you help them? I think you rightly said, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of people uh, who come to Australia and then they end up in nursing homes. Yeah. Like any job is a good job, you know, this is Australia. But at the same time, uh, nursing is not a cup of tea for everyone. But they end up in nursing because it's easy to get job in that sector, especially uh, in the aged care area, right? Uh, f to them, what I would like to say is like, don't just settle for anything. Don't undersell yourself. If you're really, you know, smart, someone like you, you know, who has good communication skills uh, and someone who wants to uh, be, a, let's say, a journalist, you know, uh, you can be a journalist, you know, in Australia, uh, if you have good communication skills, you know, uh, you will be sold anywhere, right? Uh, for them, actually, we have a solution, uh, you know, uh, we actually also do traineeship and traineeship uh, is not just for uh, schools graduates, it's open to anyone there's no age barrier and the good thing is if you are a PR already you know uh, you get government funding in the tuition fee part you know 
like for example you could join a course in TAFE, TAFE. let's say a diploma of journalism or a diploma of writing like you know copywriting or something like that and then uh, this course actually usually costs ten thousand dollars but for PRs the government actually subsidizes it and especially at the moment because of the COVID crisis the Australian government wants everyone to do some kind of training you know some of the courses are actually free you don't have to pay anything right so you do this course online while you are working you know so we enroll you in a course and at the same time we'll put you in a job as a trainee you know so as a trainee you don't get paid very well but as you said earlier you know uh, your priority is not salary at salary. the moment you want to restart your career yeah. right uh, so that's why you can work as a trainee journalist you know and um, you could be getting the qualification at the same time and within one year you have one year experience and you have a diploma of journalism and then there you go you know you become a journalist right so uh, this is something it's like in Australia there's so many wonderful programs by the government you know but the government the, the problem is like anywhere you know they are good at making announcements you know and they want to come on TV and say oh, we're doing these great things and then later on they're not good at implementing they don't promote it so a lot of people don't know about it you know uh, but uh, but we know about it and we can help you in this aspect let's go into good topic one basic and one important uh, question so how do we prepare for a job interview if I want to talk about interviews, like I can talk about it for an hour, you know. Uh, but one thing I want to say is, uh, you know, uh, when you go for interviews, uh, you don't have to be nervous, you know, uh, because you have to think it this way. If we, if you're not successful in interviews, so what? Uh, I'll go for another interview, okay? If you're too scared, if you think oh, I have to get this interview right, then you will get nervous and then you will not do well. I usually tell my candidates, you know, yeah, just go for the interview and see how it goes. Don't worry too much uh, you know uh, we, we do give them some uh, interview hints anyway uh, but I tell them to make interview an opportunity to interview the interviewer, interview the interviewer. you know so uh, so you go to the interview and then you make it a two-way communication you know you ask the interviewer uh, about the job about the organization about the training method you know uh, about the growth potential and actually ask the interviewer so what do you think is the ideal employee for this role um, so if you ask these questions then the interviewer becomes really excited uh, they, they see wow this guy is really smart you know uh, he has a lot of enthusiasm you know and that's what I'm looking for right um, and, uh, and and don't undersell yourself like especially uh, in our uh, Nepalese culture uh, you know when we grow up we've been taught to be more humble, humble. yeah uh, so we always we saw too much humility you know um, like even if someone offers something we say no no I'm fine you know uh, and someone <laughs> you know uh, like uh, ask you something you say oh, I don't know you know uh, or you just keep quiet or things like you know uh, but uh, you, you can go there with humility but n not that you undersell it. Yeah, you, you, know, you, know, you, so you end up underselling yourself, you know. Sometimes it's good to usually demand a salary, you know, instead of saying, just pay me whatever you think like is reasonable, you know. So yeah, these are some of the things that I want to say about interview. But as I said earlier, there are so many other things to discuss. So that's what interviewer look for, something yeah. who could make a difference, something new in our interviewee. Yeah, yeah. You have to actually delight the interviewer, you know. You have to stand out. The, in, the interviewer, like the interviewer will be interviewing so many candidates. And then, uh, you know, after interviewing so many candidates, they must remember you. A good resource about the company that you're applying for yeah and asking more about how, how can I improve myself how can I how can I be helpful to you yeah how can I grow your company by how can I do it you know asking those sort of things yeah exactly uh, when you go for an interview you're actually trying to sell yourself, sell yourself. you know um, so w when you sell uh, a product you shouldn't be talking about the features you should be talking about the benefits because your customer doesn't care uh, what are your features you know they only care what's in it for me you know yeah, how will it how me? will it benefit me, me, me. right mm -hmm. so similarly you know when you go for interview you don't say that like, i have a master's degree in this i have uh, got a certificate in this software this and that you know you, you tell them like how can i benefit you because i have a master's degree in let's say enterprise resource planning uh, so i can help you make your business more efficient 
So in my previous job, I did this project where I saved the company like $10 million. So, so the interviewer then uh, gets excited. So another important question for you, sir. Um, if, if an individual is looking for a career, but he or she doesn't know where to go, how, where, which career to choose. Yeah. For instance, if uh, I have completed my accounting degree here and I've, I've, com I've acquired my master's, master's degree from a university here, but I don't have passion for accountancy. Yeah. I do have a degree, but I don't have passion for accountancy. Yes. So how do I, where do I go? Where do I start? Right. Uh, yeah, that happens to a lot of people, you know. Actually, I met so many graduates, especially the Australian graduates. They spend like six years doing a degree and then they go to internship to test the water and then they realize it's not the industry they want to be in <laughs> and they want to go back to UD again. <laughs> you know, it happens, right? Uh, like, like, for example, I was talking to this one candidate. Uh, he actually studied chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he, he got a job with uh, one of the big, uh, you know, fossil fuel uh, companies. Uh, I think it was Santos or something. And then uh, he realized, uh, you know, by doing this job, I'm actually doing harm to the environment. You know, I don't feel comfortable, you know, uh, because uh, this product that I'm helping to develop is actually destroying the environment, you know. <laughs> And then uh, he came back to, he went back to uni to do environmental science, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they can afford to do it because, you know, they get hex and, you know, the government subsidies and everything. But for international students, it might not be possible. Possible. Right. So uh, what I tell th those people is that, you know, uh, when you go to uni, uh, you actually learn nothing, you know. You just learn to learn. Learn to learn. Right. So that means doesn't matter whatever qualification you have, you know, uh, you have some transferable skills transferable that you skills. can apply in other things as well. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you might have done Master of Professional Accounting. Uh, I know you studied about David Credit and all those yeah. uh, accounting concepts, right? But at the same time, uh, you might have also developed analytical skills, analytical you know, skills. Uh, attention to detail, attention to details. right? Uh, and, uh, you know, and uh, finance and accounting is useful in any job, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so so you, you might uh, use that skills to apply in some job that you love. Uh, like for example, if you want to be a journalist, you can be a finance journalist. Finance journalist. Yeah? Yeah. So you know finance, you know, uh, and you can go and uh, uh, work for a media organization and cover finance industry. So what I tell people is that, you know, it doesn't matter what qualification you have. If you don't like it, it's never too late to change, you know. You can always change your career. Mm -hmm. And especially in this day and age where so many things are happening so fast, uh, no career is secure, you know, especially in IT, you know. Uh, like you might have studied some language five years ago. That language is obsolete now, you know. And there's so many uh, new updates. Like, like, for example, if you're a web developer and you were using like Angular 5, this Angular 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, JS, you know. So you have to keep on studying. Um, I have helped candidates uh, who are talking about someone from Nepal. This guy had an MBA from Nepal. Uh, he came here, he was actually following his wife. His wife was doing, I think, MPA. MPA. Uh, and, and he was just doing some cleaning job, you know. And then he came to me and uh, he said, I already have an MBA, you know, I need a professional job in Australia. And I told him, uh, you know, unfortunately, MBA is not the very best qualification because when you do MBA, you know, you become master of, like jack of all, master of none. <laughs> so you got to specialize in one thing, you know. Uh, and I told him, like, these days, uh, you know, like, I, if you're good with technology, you know, uh, Salesforce is very popular. Sure. So you can, uh, you can do certification in Salesforce. Uh, I can help you uh, get an internship in Salesforce. A and he did that, you know. Uh, so this training can be done in like two months. You don't have to go back to uni, you know. You can just uh, do all this self-study. Like Google is like university these days. You know, YouTube is university. university you, know? Yeah. you can find anything in YouTube, right? So you self-train yourself. And then he came back to me. I put him in an internship. He got a job. 
and as a Salesforce administrator, because it is in demand these days, you know, he's now earning like $100,000 per year. So there are certain areas, uh, especially in the area of IT, there's so much job, uh, but uh, because of this herd mentality in the Nepalese community, everyone ends up in nursing, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, right? Uh, because they think it's the easiest, uh, but it's not easy anymore, you know. Uh, actually, my sister-in-law, she finished nursing uh, bachelor's recently, and she was having so much difficulty finding a job. You know, so because of the market being overcrowded, overcrowded. it's hard to get jobs. But at the same time, uh, in IT also, there are so many opportunities. Um, like, uh, there's so much technological advancements happening, you know. Like, all the old networking systems now moving into cloud. There's, like, artificial intelligence, you know, business analysts. And these people, they make lots of money. There are so many, uh, like, like this guy we were talking about previously, uh, Nepali guy, you know, I won't mention the name. Yeah. You know, he earns like $250,000 a year uh, as a SAP consultant. So, so there are a lot of opportunities in the other areas as well. Our viewers who are currently listening, if they are inspired by our talks, and if they want to contact you, where, where would they go? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I hope that I was inspiring enough for them to contact me. Um, and I wish I could help everyone, but uh, you know, I want to be realistic that you know, I run a small agency, mm -hmm. so I also have limited resources. Mm -hmm. um, I can only help uh, a small number of people, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll try my best. And I really encourage them to uh, go to our website, which is uh, www.studyandwork.com.au. Okay, um, if they would like to call me directly, uh, my mobile number is 0421-338-592. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try my, definitely I'll try my best to, you know, help them get their foot in the door uh, because it's just not my business, it's my passion as well. Um, you know, I'll, I'll do my best. We are coming to the end of our episode and would you like to give some ending remarks to our viewers? What I would say is, you know, um, especially the international students, uh, graduates and skilled migrants, you know, uh, when you come to Australia, uh, a lot of people, you know, their career actually ends because of lack of proper guidance and uh, lack of uh, finding that opportunity. Uh, I tell them, never ever give up. By coming here, you made so much sacrifices. You have left your home country, you left your mom and dad, you left your family members. Uh, you didn't come here to uh, wash dishes you know, <laughs> or do something uh, that is not satisfying. But no job is bad, you know. Even if you do dishwashing, you know, you can do it very well, and and you know, uh, you know, that would help you to improve your personality. I would like to tell them that you know, if you use the right approach, right strategies, uh, and uh, speak up and speak out, you know, uh, and um, uh, go and knock doors, uh, take that risk, then uh, you will get closer to your uh, dream job. So when you come here, you know, first of all, uh, to survive, you can get any job, uh, but try and get the jobs uh, that will improve your soft skills, Absolutely. like communication skills. Communication skills. You know? So let's say, for example, you had two part-time jobs while you're studying. Mm -hmm. uh, one job is like a waiter, and one job is a cleaner. Mm -hmm. And the cleaner job pays you $26 an hour. Mm -hmm. The waiter pays you $15. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, go for a waiter job, not cleaner job. You know, because when you work as a waiter, at least you are yeah. in contact with the customer. Skills, so you develop like communication skills, mm -hmm. you know. Um, actually, to be honest, in Australia, you will get paid at least $21 an hour if you're working legally, you know, because the minimum wages here is uh, about $20. And also, when you work as a waiter, you get tips too, you know, <laughs> which is a bonus, right? Uh, so uh, you start with a job which which will help you to improve your soft skills. And then slowly, you know, once you're settled down, you look for a job in your own field. And then uh, you can do internships, you know, uh, you can cold call employers, you can go approach them, you know, you can ask your friends for referrals because a lot of jobs are actually in the hidden job market. So they're not advertised in SIG or Indeed, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so it's always good to ask other people. Um, actually, you know, don't go for job hunting in SIG. It's very hard to find a job on SIG. I get so many candidates, they come to me and they say, I'm already sick of SIG, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's best to actually do internship or approach the companies directly, you know, and then uh, get your foot in the door and then prove your worth. 
then get a job. And definitely you will get a dream job one day soon. Thank you so much for your valuable time. And I wish you all the best for your successful endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So that's, that's the end of our tonight's episode. And we will see you next week. Stay safe and thank you.